the best project that you could possibly do for data science is all right everyone welcome back this is avery smith here i'm going to break down what the best project to do for data science is the best possible project you can possibly do but i first need to start off by saying that is clickbait. There is, I'm just gonna get out of the way right now, that is purely clickbait. There is no best data science project, okay? And before you stop watching or before you stop listening, give me a chance, okay? In terms of what the best project you could possibly do, it's the one that you actually finish because there are so many unfinished projects out there. I mean, just be honest with me, guys. How many of you have started a project and then just like left it to die on Kaggle or left it to die on your Jupyter Notebook or just never reopened it again. All right, my hand's up too. Like I've done that as well. And I definitely know that you guys have done that. So the best data science project you guys could ever possibly do is the one that you're going to finish and do a good job of. So let me give you a few tips to actually do a project that you're going to finish. Are you ready? Okay, the first step is one, to choose a hobby, something you really enjoy, you love it. Like for instance, I really like basketball. I'm wearing my Utah Jazz shirt right now. I really like sports. I really like to run. Those are some hobbies that I think would be interesting to me. It could be reading, it could be cooking, it could be traveling. Whatever you like to do in your free time, go ahead and select that as a hobby. And the reason we're going to do that is we're going to base our project off of that hobby because one of the biggest problems with projects is that you just get bored or you get discouraged, like there's no point to this. But if you're intrinsically motivated to actually do the project in the first place, that is an excellent start and it's going to help you do the project more. So first, step one is choose that hobby. Step two is niche down a little bit more into that hobby. So for instance, if I said I like basketball, I might niche more down into the Utah Jazz. Or if I said I like traveling, I might look at a trip I took or I might look at a specific you know, flights or maybe a certain hotel branch, niche down a little bit more or a certain place that's probably better like London or Paris or something and niche down that hobby into something a little bit more specific. The more specific you can be, the better. Okay, step three is to ask an important question that you would like answered. So for instance, if we go back to my example with the Utah Jazz, we just had the trade deadline. I could say, what trade could the Jazz have made to make the team better? Or if you're going to do traveling, you could say, you know, what is the most trafficked part of New York City? Or what subway station, you know, is the dirtiest or has the most complaints or something like that? Ask some sort of question that you're genuinely really interested in, like something that you'd love to know the answer to, okay? And then fourth, you're gonna to try to find a data set that matches that question. So you're gonna to try to find the data. It's always easier to find data than to collect the data. So a lot of people don't know where to go to find these data sets, but definitely try these two resources. Number one is the Google data set search engine. It's awesome. It's just for data sets and it gets you a lot of good, interesting data sets. And yes, Google owns it and you can just Google it basically. And two is Kaggle.com. I love Kaggle.com for a multitude of reasons, but one of them is they have really good data sets. So definitely check out Kaggle and the Google data set search engine. I always have the hardest time saying that phrase. It's just like data, data set, search Google engine. It's just too many words together. Okay, then you have the hobby, the niche of the hobby, and you ask an important question. Then you're gonna go ahead and find that data. And then fifth, once you found that data, you just go ahead and start. It doesn't matter what you're using. You could do it all in Excel. You could do it all in Google Sheets. You could do it in Tableau. You could do it in Power BI. You could do it in Python. You could do it in R. It doesn't really matter what platform you're using. You could do it in SQL. It doesn't matter what platform you're using as long as you're coming up with business answers to that business question you asked earlier. As long as I'm trying to find the analysis of who could be the, the next guy for the Utah Jazz or I'm just trying to figure out what subway station is the dirtiest and I'm like marking down in my notes and in my, I'm documenting what I'm doing and I'm telling a story about it. It doesn't really matter what medium you're using or even how well you do it. That's kind of a secret. It doesn't even have to be that good as long as you write a compelling story around it. And you're not focused on the data, but answering the question using the data. That's where a lot of people get tripped up. And to be honest, if your project fails, that's a success. You can say, hey, this is what I thought of. I, I picked a hobby, I niched it down. I found a data set. I did some data exploration and I realized it's not possible to answer the business question I had originally set out to do. 
that's valuable and recruiters and employers should definitely look at that as really good experience because there's a lot of problems that we can't actually solve and being able to recognize, hey, I can't solve this problem is a valuable skill in and of itself. Once you've done all that analysis, you might think, okay, this is great, I'm done, I did a project and congratulations, you totally did. But please do not stop there because you're missing the sixth and maybe the most important step and that is to share it. You need to share it with the whole world you need to tell everyone, your neighbor, your mom, your cousin, your friend. You need to tell people on LinkedIn. You need to tell people on your resume. You need to tell people on Instagram, on Facebook. Just share that story with as many people as you possibly can. And why? It's because it's a law of numbers. You never know who's going to see that and how that person might have a job opening or might know a friend who knows a friend who owns a data company and has a spot especially for you. So if you do not share, it is almost as if you did not do the project. And when you are sharing, you wanna make it a story. You're not just sharing like the end results of like, oh, my accuracy for predicting the weather was 76% using, you know, uh, multivariate linear regression. No, no one cares about the percentage. No one cares about what algorithm you use. Everyone cares about the story. So you need to write it as if it's a story instead of just writing it like it's a homework assignment. In real life, there are no homework assignments. There's only solving business values. And everyone loves to hear it through a story. So figure out a way that you can tell your story, whether that's a YouTube video like this, or whether it's a reel on Instagram, or it's an article on Medium. That's one of my favorite ways. Um, or you just have a blog and a portfolio with the blog. You need to share that project. In my opinion, the best data science project, it's the one you like because that's the one you'll finish and that's the one you'll share with others. And if you like it, then you're doing it to like it and not just to do it for homework and stuff like that. So I encourage you guys to start your own best project. Start doing a data science project you actually love, that you'll actually finish and you'll be excited to do and then share with others. That is my challenge for you guys today. And hey, if you need a little help, that is what I do at Data Career Jumpstart. I'm always happy to help with personal projects. So as always, guys, if you found this useful, please subscribe, share it with a friend, share it with your mom, your aunt, your cousin, your dog. I don't care. Just send it to someone and let me know down in the comments if you want to do a personal project and what that personal project might be. I'll try to respond to as many as I possibly can. As always, I have a new video coming out every week where I try to help you guys with data content to up level your data career. And with that, that's all I got. That's the best data science project I could possibly give you and I'm done.